Washington Avenue in downtown St. Louis, sometimes called the Loft District, used to have an even loftier nickname, Shoe Street, USA. A century ago, Washington Avenue was the center of what today would be called a fashion ecosystem, but back then was simply known as the Garment District. In the 1920s, there were 121 clothing-related businesses that then that could be zippers, fabric, buttons, whatever. Um, and then there were over 20 footwear companies in St. Louis, big companies. It literally hummed with activity. You could hear the production, the machines, crowds, carts, all kinds of comings and goings. It was a very, very busy, very alive vibe to it. At its zenith, St. Louis's garment district was second in size only to New York. St. Louis was founded as a fur trading village and it just developed from there. Washington Avenue at that time had easy access down to the river and down to the levee and then as trains came it was just a natural. Now St. Louis's fashion heyday is being celebrated in a new book called Ready to Wear written by Valerie Battle Kinzel, whose own family has ties to the footwear business. And in St. Louis, there was no business like shoe business. During the, the height of the shoe industry here in St. Louis, the, um, the marketing changed a little bit where it had been common for people to have a pair of dress shoes and a pair of everyday or play shoes. Suddenly, um, the marketing switch to, oh, you can have a different pair of shoes to go with this different outfit or this color. And St. Louis was at the right place at the right time for that. In the early days, the work was steady, but the hours were long and the pay was terrible. If you were lucky, you made a couple of bucks a week. The employees were often immigrants or women or both, and some were their children. Many of the immigrants had a different idea about a work ethic, and if you were a mouth to feed, then you should be able to earn money to help pay for your food and your clothing. St. Louis's fashion factories not only made clothing, they also manufactured ideas. The concept of junior-sized dresses was invented in St. Louis. So were harvest hats. And so was a marketing idea that today extends beyond the clothing business. Does your shoe have a boy inside? Some of the advertising that I grew up with actually started with companies here, like Buster Brown and uh, Red Goose Shoes. I, as a child, remember going and getting Red Goose shoes and there was a goose and you pulled its neck and a, an egg popped out and you got a prize. That was an incentive, but that was something that was started here. You can get a free Boodle bag with surprises inside. When you and you think about it, there's still fast food restaurants that are offering incentives to make children want to have their parents purchase the food. That was the same way for shoes manufactured here in St. Louis. Profitable military contracts during World War I gave St. Louis's fashion businesses enough cushion to survive the Great Depression all the way up until the next military boom period, World War II. But eventually, world wars and big profits both came to an end. Cheap overseas labor began tearing at the fabric of the American garment industry. Companies like Brown Shoe tried to keep up by opening non-union plants in nearby small towns. For a while, some shoe companies even used prison labor to keep costs down. But by the 1960s, St. Louis's clothing industry started to fold. Today, only a few old timers are still hanging on. But much like fashion itself, what's old sometimes becomes new again. We have just as good a chance of any city in the United States to become a fashion capital again. Susan Sherman is co-founder of the St. Louis Fashion Fund, which is trying to make St. Louis's clothing industry more cutting edge, encouraging young designers and new businesses 
to stay here or move here. 25% of the proceeds from internet sales of Ready to Wear will be donated to the Fashion Fund. I'm thrilled about this book. I think that we've waited so long to really tell our story. I mean, it's been, we've told it in bits and pieces, media, we've had some national media and everything else, but to have it all in one place is really special. And I think it will just be a great branding opportunity for St. Louis, because it's a St. Louis story. It's a great story.